Hi everybody, my name is Michael and I am a rising senior at Chatham University studying computer science and I'm here to present my game on the Great Nebula Offensive and I just want to say thank you to the SGDA um, folks for allowing me to send in this pre-recorded video because I was unable to make the live stream due to a wedding. So this is my game which is a difficult 2D bullet hell and as you can see there are very simple controls that um, you can read through in the game menu and the game also tracks your stats and then we'll shortly get into each of the levels. Um, I'm just going to talk through the gameplay that's happening on screen and then once the gameplay is over I'll get more into the specific questions that um, I was provided to sort of answer. So before each level there's a little pre-level screen that gives you a little bit of story about kind of what's going on and also some intel about what to expect from the level in case players get stuck because this game is super hard. So um, that intel will provide small strategies to allow you to basically um, better overcome the obstacles that are present in the game. And the game has three total levels, each with its own unique um, victory conditions, um, style, and um, bosses and such. So this first level is a purely wave-based level with fixed waves that get bigger and bigger as you complete each of the waves. So after each wave, there's this little animation that kind of signifies that you're going on to the next wave and then more enemies are introduced and the new type of enemy is also introduced. As you can see, the enemies are one shot, one kill. And also, as you might see a little later, uh, the players also one hit, one kill. So you have to really master your movement and how um, effectively you can dodge in between those shots to uh, defeat the enemies. Obviously, as I'm playing, it might seem easy because I'm the game creator, so I obviously kind of know what the best strategy is to tackle um, each of the levels. And each of the levels does have its own unique uh, strategy to do, which on this level, I prefer to go up the middle to stop the top sh shifts as early as possible because the bottom ones aren't really a threat to you unless you're down there. Um, and what you're seeing now is the special attack, which got charged um, whenever you defeat an enemy. And shots from the special attack attack and also charge it again so um, once it gets really chaotic you can really daisy chain them together to help you clear out the enemies on the screen and you'll see that in this next wave and this is the final wave for level one and it's obviously the biggest one out of all of them and then you can see the special ability is taking care of most of them and then you'll see i'll fire another one right after because again they can daisy chain into another which makes the level much easier if you know that strategy. And then upon completion of the level, um, you'll get a similar screen to the pre pre-game screen. And here it'll just tell you like, good job, uh, what's the next steps in the story and your stats for that level. Um, so you can see how many times you've died in total, how many shots you fired, how many enemies you destroyed, and just some fun stuff for people to track how well they've been doing. Onto the second level, same as before. Here there's the pre-game or pre-level uh, menu with intel for new mechanics, which are the lasers that are going to be spawning at the top and the bottom, and also the sideways moving enemy type will now move in a wave, and there's also a mini boss present at the end of this level. And once it gets started, this level is based off of a survival type level where there's that timer at the top left of the screen that once that counts down, you'll encounter a mini boss, and as the timer goes down, more enemies are going to spawn um, which will make it harder, but can also make it easier because that's more enemies for you to charge your special ability on. So there I got defeated by the laser, and this is the defeat screen, which kind of shows, you know, your happy little city getting annihilated. And from here, players can just instantly retry and go straight back into the level. Um, I wanted to make that like a very fast process because people that are new to the game will tend to see that screen a lot. So you don't want to get bogged down by animations and um, loading screens so you can just instantly skip the cutscene if you want and just go straight back to the level. Um, as you see I'm kind of have my own strategy for this level. I'm staying towards the top because again those sideways moving enemies are kind of hard to deal with when they're shooting directly at you but if you can deal with the top ones who are vulnerable to the side then it could really help you um, beat this level. Um, you may notice at some points that um, I should be dying when I'm not, and that's probably because I, I have god mode enabled, which just allows me to get through the level in a timely manner, so I'm not um, sitting there frustrated for an hour trying to beat one of the levels. <laughs> so, as you can see, there's more enemies spawning. I'm getting kind of backed up to the left, and there I died again. 
So here's this animation coming. And same as last time, you could just hit retry whenever you want, and it'll go back to the main menu. Um, I think for the next run, I do have God Mode enabled, so I could just <laughs> easily run through um, that. But as that's running, I can kind of take the opportunity to answer some questions, because this level is one of the longer ones. The timer at the top is kind of paced to be about a minute, and then about an extra 30 seconds for the final uh, mini boss at the end. Um, so as I said earlier, I'm a rising senior at Chapman, and I developed this game by myself. Um, and I did the art as well as all the coding. Um, the music I did get off of YouTube. Um, so um, all the art you see is mine, except for a few sprites and the UI I used as a package from Unity, from the Unity store. Um, but this was a very fun project for me because I have always liked art, but I never had a chance to actually do it um, in any capacities. But making games allowed me to kind of show my artistic side in addition to like what I like to do with coding. Um, um, in terms of how this game got started, um, this was actually a project for one of my classes. This level you're seeing now, the second level, was the whole game, but I liked doing it so much that um, I decided I wanted to do it outside of class and develop the other two levels and make it into a full game um, to be published. And since then I've been working on it um, on and off for about a year now, um, outside of class and in my free time. Um, how long have I been working on the game? Um, it's been a while, maybe like a year to a year and a half. Um, obviously, there's different periods of you know, my development time because I try to do it when I have free time. So depending on how busy school is and work and everything, um, stuff gets done in a kind of irregular manner. But now you can see I made it to the final boss of this, which is just a small mini boss of this level. As you can see, again, I'm not really engaging the boss at all before it's enraged because you can actually just avoid the bullets at the top, charge your special ability, and slowly poke him down um, because I'm just a cautious player and I don't want to have to go through this whole level again to get here. So I try to play it as safe as possible and just pepper him until he gets to his enraged mode and then I'm going to actually um, take on the boss, you know, the more intended way by dodging his shots. Um... And it's also good to note that the special ability is not just good for clearing out waves of enemies, it's also really good at just shotgunning boss type enemies with like the spread, and it could really like deal a ton of damage to them really quickly, um, but then you risk not clearing out the rest of the enemies on screen which might defeat you. So there I got the win. Um, as you can see that boss had two modes, and the enraged one it just shoots more bullets and forces you to be more proactive. And then there's another mission debrief that says good job blah blah blah, and then you're going to be moving on to take on the mothership. So this final boss is supposed to be all, you know, spooky and oh no, scary. <laughs> so this final boss has multiple phases. I think it's about like six or seven individual phases, part which are part of three major phases. And so the first major phase are these the four arms of the ship where the player needs to destroy the little shield generators so that they can attack the bridge. And um, each of the arms has like more and more guns that you just saw that I destroyed and what's fun about this level is I wanted to create more agency for the player so you can take either the route of destroying the shield generators first and ignoring the guns or you can destroy the guns and then the shield generator which will give you uh, more ability charge because each time you destroy uh, one of the main guns it gives you 20 percent but it will take longer, and it kind of puts you more at risk of getting killed because you're spending so much time, which is more of an opportunity to slip up. So you can see there, I just got rid of the shield generator and destroyed the guns automatically. And the lasers are still coming in from the top and bottom. That's mainly an anti-choosing mechanic that I added in, because when I had people playtest the game, a lot of them were just sitting at the very top of the screen above all the enemies, and, well, there I got lasered and died. <laughs> a lot of them were staying at the top, of the screen and dodging enemies and just stalling out the entire level and eventually getting stuck and they couldn't go out without dying so i wanted to add that just to prevent players from wanting to do that not fully preventing them like if they want to hide there for a second and come back up uh, but not allowing it to be sort of campy i guess um so again just going through this level i think i have god mode enabled now so i can um get through it to show you guys um and this is like the, the final boss level that I wanted to encapsulate because each of the levels are sort of um, different level archetypes that I found that are common in bullet hells like 
fixed wave levels, survival levels, and then like a multi-phase boss fight level um, that you might find in games like Cuphead or Undertale or something. Um, so that's what this level is supposed to be. It's kind of the culmination of all the mechanics the players have been learning and really the most difficult thing they can um, fight in this game. Um, the laser cannon that you've been seeing, it has two different attacks. Um, so you, the player needs to watch the positioning of the laser to see where it's going to start and end so they can preemptively move. This is the fourth wing, which has all six guns on it. Um, this one, you can see I'm going for the actual arms because, or the cannons on the arms. There, I should have died at the god mode enabled. <laughs> because there's so much stuff flying around at this point that it's just a better idea just to try and clear out as much as you can first before gunning it for the shield generator, just to make it easier and just kind of heighten your chances of winning. Um, as you can see there, I, I noticed that the laser was pointing downwards, so I wanted to fly up to the top and behind it to avoid its attack. I also could have went to the bottom, which probably would have been a better decision, which I do there. And then here comes in the, the second main phase, which is the assault on the actual bridge of the ship. Um, here the objective is a little different. Um, here you just have to clear out the guns, but also the enemies are going to be spawning now from the hangar that's behind the this main bridge area. So the player is going to have to watch out for enemies flying in and also soaking up their bullets to protect the um, guns and then also dodging lasers and everything like that. Um, once this phase is completed, it'll move on to the um, main hangar, which you'll have another encounter with the mini boss that you encountered earlier. It has vastly reduced health so that this level was actually possible because I found I could not beat it for the life of me. Um, and so you can see there I use a special ability to sort of shotgun the health and it's already gone. Um, and then now it's just a matter of defeating the hangar and destroying the core and winning the game. Um, so yeah, I had to reduce the HP on that mini boss a lot because I couldn't beat it and eventually you get just swarmed by the, the mini enemies that come out of the hangar and it's just impossible in that tight space. So um, using that shotgun method is what I found to be most effective there once I made that change. And this is just a little defeat animation of the mothership getting sucked into the black hole. Um, this game isn't completely finished. There are some stuff that I want to add, like making a more interesting animation here and fixing some clipping issues you might have noticed. Um, but for the most part, gameplay-wise, the game is done outside of DLC and stuff I want to add. And this is the little um, thanks for playing screen that you'll see once you beat the game and it's just like a thank you as most games have and from there my trailer's just going to play now in the background which has more gameplay um, and then now I will continue answering some of the more specific questions that I was sent um, so um, do I have any plans for this game's future development uh, yes I am currently working on a small little shop where you can buy like small microtransactions where you can buy different ship skins or different ships, and the different ships have special abilities, have different special abilities um, that doesn't make them necessarily more powerful than one another. Um, I just wanted to like have some options for people that want to get a new look or try something else or a different play style. Um, so one of them has like a one of the lasers. It will just shoot a laser for a couple seconds, so you can just kind of move up and down the screen and clear out everything. Um, another one has homing um, shots that will automatically home on the enemies, and so on. I'm also working on three extra levels, kind of like an extra level pack um, that, take, that has like um, three new levels, including a new big boss and mini boss and um, following the same style, but in like a different setting and with a different story um, and more challenging than what's currently in the game. Um, what's the most difficult part of development? Um, for me, it was definitely the art. Um, I'm not an artist, like I said earlier, I'm just a computer science student that likes doing art. This was my first attempt ever at doing pixel art. Um, I thought it was really fun. And I really liked it. Um, a lot of challenges came from me being severely colorblind. So I had to send a lot of my art to my friends and family to make sure the colors matched up and that looked good. And I wasn't, you know, putting green and orange and stuff together and all that fun stuff. Um, but the art definitely took the longest. I think almost 70% of my time was of this game's development was dedicated to art because of how much animation and backgrounds and stuff like that um, the game has. Um, leading on to that, what part of the game I'm most proud of? 
probably to defeat screen. Um, I think the animation of the laser charging up and coming down and destroying the city is really cool. And kind of makes you, like, and paired with the music kind of makes you take back and you're like, dang, my, my entire planet just got glassed because I lost. So it's kind of a somber ending, but I think it's still a cool um, animation to look at even when you lose. And it's not something you get frustrated with seeing, I guess, because it kind of has a cool factor to it. Um, how has the game changed over time? Um, not much. Um, the, my core game play really stayed the same. It was a matter of just new level mechanics and things like that to make it more challenging and interesting and not have the same game loop over and over and over again for every level so that players didn't get bored and frustrated and just quit. Um, and how did you handle accessibility while designing the gameplay and art? Um, this was a big one for me. Like I said earlier, colorblindness. Um, I'm very, very colorblind, and a lot of games do not even care or even think about that, it feels like. Um, so one of the main things I did was creating a sort of texturization to the art. If you notice in the backgrounds, the backgrounds of every level are much, much higher resolution and highly detailed than objects in the foreground. And this was to create a sort of difference in dimension, so that way I could use like colors and keep a similar color palette, but because of the pixel difference and the resolution difference, it really makes things that are interactable, like enemy ships, enemy bullets, um, really pop out so that for me, it's really easy for me to see and other colorblind people I know, it's really easy them to see what's going on, even though, you know, there's same purples in the background, same blues, same reds. Um, so that was like a major thing that I really wanted to focus on and really strive to do. So people don't have experiences like I have with a lot of games where I just simply can't see some stuff. Um, what is my design philosophy for creating the game? Um, from the beginning, I knew that I wanted to create a very, very difficult bullet hell. One of my favorite games of all time is Cuphead, and this the gameplay of this game is like based almost directly off of the um, airship levels of Cuphead, where you're in the little plane. That same movement in the 2D space and everything like that. Um, so I wanted to emulate that, and I also really liked how I felt playing Cuphead not overwhelmed by the amount of projectiles on screen. I think a lot of bullet hells just try to be like, okay, here's thousands of projectiles, good luck. I don't really find that very fun. I find precisely placed um, obstacles that like you have to act like dodge masterfully more interesting because that feels like more of a mastery of the game and not just a luck based, um, you know, I'm dodging this because there just so happens to be no projectiles here. Um, and it's more of a timing and mastery of the movement rather than just sheer numbers flying at you. Which also helps make it more accessible to people because I, I feel like people get less overwhelmed um, when there's just less stuff on screen. Um, and yeah, finally, do I like the genre? Yeah, I love bullet hells. I love super hard games. Um, recently played Elden Ring and that's also an amazing game. I love games that, you know, it beats you down and beats you down and beats you down, but then you finally overcome it and you get this wave of relief and like joy from beating it. And that's really what I wanted to do in this game, seeing my friends play it. They like slam their desk. I'm like, that's like the, that's the reaction I want, and then they get really happy when they beat the level. Um, so I find that really fun, and I find that like just the most fun thing for me. I love overcoming those kind of obstacles, especially when the obstacles are fair and it feels like I need to improve to beat them. It's not down to luck or randomness. Um, but yeah, so I tried my best to stay in the time time frame. I think that's about 19 minutes. Thank you again for the opportunity to send in for me to send in this um, video. I hope I answered as many questions as I could and kept it clear. <laughs> Just, there was a lot of information for me to fit in here. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching my presentation on the Great Nebula Offensive. Um, I'm hoping to put the game on Steam soon. It is currently on Itch. And yeah, thank you very much. Have a good weekend.